Hey there. So I just set up this avatar and it's a cute little Avali, as you can see, and it has these goggles here. Now, these goggles here, uh, what are we going to be setting up is being able to just grab an object, move it down, and that will move the goggles from up here to down here to actually cover the eyes. Now, I already set up the actual positions for that. So over here, I have the position where it should be when the goggles are up on the forehead and the rotation for it. And then I have the position and the rotations where it should be when it's down here. So if I change this value down here to a one, you'll see that the goggles are now being worn. And if I change it back to zero, it's back up here. And if I go to point one, point two, point three, point four, point five, point six, point seven, point eight, and point nine, they slowly go down lower and lower. Now, obviously, we don't want to manually change those values. We want this to be pretty much automatic. So what we're going to do quickly is we'll go to this grab bone here and go to its parent and actually make a new slot here and call this slider root. Now, once we have the slider root, what we can do is we can simply move it to the in-between position. And I'll also rotate it so it's a little bit more... Actually, I think the rotation's fine. I can move it down here like this. So now it's pretty much halfway between the point on the snoot and the head so grabbing the head and pulling down should be easy and grabbing the snoot and pulling up should also be easy especially because they have a more shallow face so it shouldn't be too hard to grab and what we do is we simply make a, another slot beneath the slider root which is now at zero zero here and then we just move it to be at the goggles like this then we want to look what axis we moved it on. We moved it on the blue axis, so that's the z-axis. Every other movement we will actually set back to zero. So then we know that this is how far it moved in local space. Now what we need to do is we need to actually attach a new component to this slot. First, a physics collider, box collider. And second, we also want a transform interaction slider. Now, what this allows us to do is to move it around like this. Now, currently, this moves in every direction and how far we want. Now, that's obviously not ideal because we want it to only move on a very specific axis, which is the Z axis. So if we look at the slider here, a more quickly enabled bone drive, now what this does is basically it makes it so instead of driving the values when it's grabbed, it's going to write the values, so it's going to be networked. Now, if we down here change the range on the x-axis to zero, it can no longer move left and right. It can only move backwards, forwards, and up and down. And if we set the y-axis to zero too, it now can only move up and down or actually in its rotational, so like for, for its rotation, it's basically moving forwards and backwards because Z is usually forwards and Y is up. But because it's rotated like this, Z is basically our up and down right now. So what we then next need to do is we need to limit the amount of distance it can move. So for that, what we need to do is we need to consider the ring. If, so if we set this to a range of one, that means it can move a total range of one. So if I quickly change this here to a one, I can show you exactly what that means. I will also change origin back to zero, 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 and then reset its position. But now if I move it up, you can see it moves all the way to 0 0.5 and down, it also moves to 0 0.5. Because what you have to remember is, you always have to double the range depending on where you want it to end up. So if you want it to end up at a, at a point of one, from one to one, we need to actually set it to two because the range is calculated from the center it's currently at, up and down. So it's allowed now to move two units 
which in total goes from negative one to positive one, because that's how sliders generally work. So now we quickly undo this. So we have this value here again. Nope. Uh, actually, that's not far enough back. There we go. It is far enough back. So what we then have to do is we have to grab this value here. Let's make it a little bit cleaner so it's easier to work with. Yeah, 0 0.06 seems about right. And then we just consider what this is doubled, which would be 0 0.12. Now, don't, don't take into account the fact it's negative. We always work with positive values when it comes to range. So we just set this to 0 0.12. And now if I move it up and down, it'll only go that far. Oh, but we forgot to reset the origin. Always make sure that your origin is zero if you do this, because otherwise it's going to be offset. So now it actually is properly going up and down. Now you could move the origin point if you don't want to work with uh, going from the origin zero. However, I suggest always making it a little root slot because it just makes it a little bit easier to deal with. Now, next, we want to adjust the collider because uh, while it's nice having this much space to grab the to grab the um, goggles from, it's probably not ideal, so let's quickly visualize this collider. And what we'll actually do is we'll deselect all, select this collider here, bookmark context menu, go to gizmo options, and then here we have the box collider option in the gizmo options. If we click that, we get this little editor visual here, which then allows us to simply select a point with trigger or primary if you're not using uh, the controllers and just move it to match about the goggles, roughly. It doesn't need to be a one to one, obviously, because it's just a little collider that we need to grab at. It could even be like a small sphere. But I'm going to try and match it pretty closely. So now, there we go. And I'll make it a little bit taller, actually. All right, snap into the center, slight issue. So, got this. There we go. So now it's covering basically the goggles. So, what this means is I can actually grab here. Oh, let me grab the after too. Grab this and move it up and down like this, and it'll move the collider too. Now, what we need to do next is we need to consider the values that we're actually generating from this, because here, what we're basically uh, generating is a value from a negative 0 0.6 to positive 0 0.6. So to actually use these values, what we can do is we can just grab position, and personally, what I like to do is, uh, you can do any like map you want with this, but what I like to do is I like to just, I use a source, and I like to use the operator nodes. And for something like this, that doesn't happen that often, it doesn't really matter how you do this. You could use remap or any other way to do it, but one way to do it and you could do it is just if it's a value that's like smaller than uh, one, you, j you can just multiply it. Oh, sorry. I forgot to first give it a value. You can just multiply it. So this value here would, for example, then be instead of 0 0.06, it would be 6. And then you could divide it by 6, which would then give you a range from negative 1 to positive 1. However, you can also use a singular node for this instead, which is the remap node, which is found in mass. Remap, and then remap float. So here, if we try to connect this to the value, you'll see this pop up with explicit cast, and we can't do it. Now this is because remap only works with a float value. It can't work with a float free value. So what we need to do, is we need to go back to operators and go to the packing section here. And then we need to get unpack free. And we want a float free unpack. Pull well, this in like here and get the Z value. So now we have just a normal value of 0 0.06. Put this into the value. 
then our minimum value, the smallest value we can have, is the top, the top side of it. So that's zero at negative 0 0.06. And the maximum value is 0 0.06. And then our minimum output we want is zero. And our maximum output we want is one. So now what this does is, is if the value is negative 0 0.06, it's going to give us one at zero, sorry. <laughs> and if it, our input is 0 0.06, it's going to give us one. If I then put this like here and then move it up and down, you'll see how that works. Any value in between is just going to actually be calculated automatically for us. So what this now allows us to do is use this value. Oh, uh, where did I put that on again? I think it was on the grab one, actually. Yeah, on the grab one itself. We can use this value to drive this value multi driver here. So now, if I grab this, I can move it up and down like this. And that's pretty much it. Now all you have to do is just pack it into a nice slot. So let's quickly do that. Give this a better name also, call this slider. And call this here. Slider math. And then we pretty much have it done because all we need to now do is just pack it. So we go back to the brute flux tip, select all of this, and pack it. And now it's just a part of the avatar. So if I now grab the avatar, I can now grab it and move it physically up and down. So if it was in the avatar, I could actually do this myself with my hand. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that currently everyone can do this, meaning someone can just go grab it, move it up, move it down, or even grab and grab it and then go and destroy it. Now, to control some of this stuff, we have to actually go to the slider. And inside of the slider here, we can then set it so that the only the physical grab is allowed, so that means no one can laser it anymore to actually move it. As you can see, if I try to laser it, it's now just grabbing the entire avatar. And since avatars can't be picked up like a normal object, it would actually just do nothing. Now, next, we can then set a, uh, what's it called again? The active user filter, uh, which currently is disabled, which means everyone can use it. Uh, if we set this to only active user, now only the user wearing the avatar can use it. So even if I'm like right now trying to grab it, it'll grab the entire avatar. But if I'm holding the avatar or have it equipped, I can actually move it again. Now what you can also do is you can set it to active user when present, which means that now if I get close enough of my grab, I can actually move it because no one is inside of the avatar. But if someone was wearing the avatar, I would not be able to interact with it. And if you want to be really silly, you can actually also set it to exclude active user, which means anyone else can move your goggles around. Uh, but if you're in the avatar or holding the avatar, you can no longer move the goggles around. Um, I don't know why you would do this, but it, it is an option you can, in fact, do. But yeah, the last issue is obviously that People can just grab the goggles and destroy it, and then your slider is broken. Now, to fix that, we go to Attach Component here. And if I'm not mistaken, it's in Transform Tagging. And here we have the Destroy Block. So the Destroy Block will make it so that if someone grabs the goggles like this, and is moving them around, if they click Destroy, it doesn't work. It will not destroy the goggles. So now these goggles cannot just be destroyed like a normal object. Well, specifically the slider for it. Because what would normally happen if you do that is it would simply delete the slider. But yeah, I hope this helps you in setting up whatever you want to set up. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye.